Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to talk about three functions in Python. Those three functions are map, filter, and reduce. So these three functions operate on a list of values and they do something different for each function. So of course, because there are three different functions. So I'll show you how all three work and why you would use them. So first, map, filter, and reduce are normally functions associated with functional programming. And functional programming is just, uh, one way you can think about it is programming without having any side effects. So that means when you pass in a list into one of these three functions, you get something in return that doesn't affect the original list. As you know, in Python, you can modify a list, and if you were to copy it to another list, they both would be linked. So any modifications to one list will affect the other, even though you kind of copied it over. With functional programming, there are no copies like that. Instead, you get new lists returned every time, or in this case, map objects and filter objects, which you'll see me demonstrate in just a moment. So. Let me demonstrate and I can explain what's going on as I do it. So the first one I want to demonstrate is the map function. So map will take a list of items and apply a function to each individual item in that list. And the canonical example is squaring every number in a list. I'll start with that. So I'll say numbers is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll have a function and let's call this function square. It's going to take in a single value and it's going to return the square of that value. And then when I run map using the square function over the numbers list, I should get a list with each individual number squared once I convert the map object to a list. So to do that, I'll use list and then map because the result of map is a map object and it's not the actual list that I want, so I'm converting it to a list here. Map. And then I pass in first the function, so in this case square. I don't need the parentheses or the function because the, or the variable because that's taken care of for me. And then I pass in the list. And when I do this, I get the new list return that will have each individual number in the list squared. So if I run this, so Python script. I get one, four, nine, sixteen, and twenty-five. That's because those are the squares of the original numbers that I have in there. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is sixteen, and five squared is twenty-five. And for something like this, you don't need to actually create a function. You can use something called a lambda. So a lambda is kind of like an anonymous function in JavaScript. So it's kind of like your writing the function and its contents in one spot. So to demonstrate, I'll print list, map, and instead of using square, I'm going to just add lambda. So lambda x, so the x here represents the x parameter there. Then the colon tells me that what follows after this is the, the actual body of the function. There's no return statement necessary, just the actual statement. So in this case is x squared. So this lambda x colon x squared is the same as this up here. The only difference is this doesn't have a name. Lambda is what you use for these anonymous functions or unnamed functions. And then you pass in the list. So numbers there. And if I run this, I'll get the exact same thing. So you will use map anytime you want to do the same action to a bunch of items. So another example could be something like uppercasing all the values um, of a string. So I'll call this uppercase and the parameter will be string. I'll return string dot upper. And then what I'll do is I'll create a list of values and let's say ABC D, F, G, H, I. And I will map the uppercase function over my values, meaning that uppercase is going to be applied to each individual one of these values in the list. So you should know what is going to happen here. I run this. And I get the same list in return, but instead of having lowercase values, I have uppercase because I use the upper here and it's being applied to each 
item in the list. So now let's go to filter. Filter is similar in use, meaning the first value is, the first argument is a function that will be applied, and the second value is a list. In this case, the function doesn't get applied to each item, and then that is returned. Instead, the function gets applied, and if it's true, then it gets added to a new list. If it's false, it doesn't get added. And it does this for each one. So if the values mean something, so first let me give you an example. So let's call this nums. And this will just be one, two, three, four, five as well. Now let's do six. So let's say I wanted the values that are greater than three. So I want a new list that has values four, five, and six. What I'll do is I'll reduce, or excuse me, filter the values in the list. So I'm going to list and then filter. So filter is built in as well. I pass in a function here. So I'll do a lambda x, and I want to say x greater than three. So that's going to be the filter. And then I need to pass in the list, nums. So this should create a new list with values that are only greater than three from the original list. So I run that and I have the original one up there printing, so I'll comment that out. But you see four, five, and six. So because four, five, and six in this list are greater than three, they get added to the new list. And one, two, and three get returned because that is false there. So if I wanted to create a function for this, I could say something like greater than three x, and then I'll return x greater than three, which is a truth statement. So if x is greater than three, then it returns true. If not, it returns false. And anytime it returns true, it just simply adds that value into the new list that it's building. So that's filter. Uh, and the last one I want to show you is reduce. So reduce needs to be imported. So from func tools, import reduce. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'll have a list of items and reduce kind of combines them using some function that I specify. So in the same way, it takes in a function and then a list. But in this case, it takes in two values for the function. One will be the accumulated value and the second one will be the current value. So one of the typical use cases is summing a list. So I'll just use nums up here again. And what I want to do is I want to reduce this to a sum of all the numbers in the list. So what that means is I start with the first one, then I add it to the second. I keep track of that, which will be three. Then I add three to that, six. Keep track of the six. Add four, that's 10. Add five, 15, and add six, 21. So to do that without using a loop, I would simply do something like this. So print, I'm going to reduce. And then the function in this case will be lambda x and y. So this time the function takes two arguments. And what I want to do is simply add them. So x will represent the accumulated values and y will represent the next value in the list. And then I will pass in the list there. And I forgot the colon. So if I run this, I see 21. And I can do the same thing with multiplication. So instead of adding the numbers, I can multiply them as I go along. So it should be one times two, which is two, times three is six, times four is 24, times five is 120, and times six is 720. So if I run this, I should get 720, which is exactly what I get. And of course, this can be applied to strings as well. So if I make that plus again, and I say strings, I can combine these. So this is a sentence. And as you can imagine, when I pass this in, everything will be combined. And when I run this, it combines everything into one sentence. So it's kind of like running join, but it's just an alternate way of doing it. So that's how you use reduce. So if you have some list of items that you want to apply some common function across and either get a list of the same length with 
updated values or a smaller list that has filtered out values or a single value that uses each one of the original values in the list to generate this new value, then you can use the functions map, filter, and reduce. So that's just a brief intro to it. There's so much more you can do with them, but um, I didn't want to get into any more complicated examples. That's just an overview. And if you play around with it, you should be able to figure out some other use cases for it. So that's it for this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And if you have a comment, you can leave it down below. So just make sure you visit my site, prettyprinter.com for programming courses. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.